All right, let us say hello to the multi-time IBJJF world champion, Talita Alencar, who has put together an incredible resume in the jiu-jitsu world, and now she's about to embark on a, on a new chapter in her combat sports career into the world of mixed martial arts. Her MMA debut will take place July 2nd at Titan FC 70, which will air on UFC Fight Pass, and she will compete in the strawweight division against Stacey Vega. Talita, welcome to the show. Welcome to MMA. How are you? Thank you. I am great. And you? <laughs> I am great. So I guess uh, I guess my first question right off the bat, why now? Why make the move to MMA now? Um, I think if you watch my jiu-jitsu uh, fights, like match, uh, you could uh, see that I have a very aggressive style that transition perfect to MMA. I've been told like for many years um, after like people start to see me more uh, fighting my style like oh why you don't do MMA and I never really felt so comfortable to do MMA knowing that I have to do a, such a big step you know and I told myself if one day I decide to do MMA that will be when I have a great team and well, it's perfect because I just I met Charles McCarthy. He, he introduced me days MMA work, and it was the perfect fit for me. And I have the best team, the best support. That's why I decided to to do my pro debut um, after I started to do MMA almost two years ago. Okay, so two years ago you met Charles. What, what, where did you meet Charles? Like, how did did you guys just kind of run into each other, or have you known Charles for for a little while? No, I actually was living in California, just uh, doing the jiu traveling, doing seminars, and I was talking to a friend of uh, us in Como, uh, Sam. And he trained with Charles in the past in ATT when they were all part of ATT. And and I was telling him how frustrated he was trying to do MMA. And I didn't have the great team behind me. And I was, like, facing some controversy and, like, some stuff that happened when people wanted to manage you. And at Saturday, and I was, like, telling him that's so hard to not have support and I have a team and have to do everything by myself like I did mostly in the end of my career in jiu-jitsu and he's like oh I have just the perfect guy to introduce to you and we booked the the meeting and I met Charles like right away I love Charles and he sounds a very legit person to me and so we're together uh, like as a team he been just only helping and uh, making me achieve my uh, ultra performance yeah I, I've spoken to folks such as like Gordon Ryan, for example, about making the move to MMA. And he said, you know, essentially when he's ready to do this, it's not th something you just say, okay, I'm an MMA fighter now. Like, just like kind of you, like he knows you have to take quite a bit of time to, to learn the striking, to use grappling effectively in an MMA fight. How beneficial has, has these two years been for you sort of honing your craft and preparations for this fight? In the beginning, like I said, I was living in California and I came to Florida to open an academy, Gamblers Jiu Jitsu. And after a year in Florida, it did not work the way I was expecting. I was planned when I came down to uh, West Boca. Uh, in the beginning, it was just for fitness purpose, just to see how it worked. And after a year doing this, I, my follow up year was like serious. And um, in the beginning, it was very overrounding, like still a little bit, you know. But uh, right now, it, everything's more clear. It doesn't mean that's perfect, you know. But um, everything's getting together. Uh, the, the fact of studying all these styles from boxing to kickboxing, white tie, 
working from Taekwondo to Judo and all the school working from you is like so much information. I felt that I was like just a white belt in Jiu Jitsu and MMA and still like my friends joke with me like now you're blue belt on stripe but, but still it's like it's a big change. <laughs> It, it was very overwhelming. It now makes more sense. Transition much my style. Everyone going to be expecting me to only jiu-jitsu wrestle, but I am ready to boxing and kickboxing as well. I I actually have been doing great on my kickboxing range. Going to the four range safe, kickboxing, medium and close range. I think um, it's over there. I am just getting better every day and every day, you know, a little a day by day thing. And I look forward to being in a cage, you know. It's it's a feeling that it's the same feeling when I step to go do my finals at World World titles, you know. Yeah, what I was curious like what the feeling is like a little less than two weeks, two weeks away from this fight. Like I'm sure there's feelings of some sort of nerves that come over you before a big jujitsu match or a tournament, but now there's a good chance that you're gonna get punched in the face. Uh I think I lost you. You still there? Yep. Yeah, I got her back. Okay. Yeah, so now you you're probably gonna get punched in the face like in a combat sports atmosphere. So like, how would you compare the feeling of getting ready for an MMA fight, the buildup to that compared to getting ready for a big jujitsu match or a big jujitsu tournament? It's totally different, of course. You know, I have to be worried about many things. Um, um, of course, I'm, I'm going to be, like I study like my opponent and everything to be aware of what is her good, um, good areas and bad areas and I am not really worried about my opponent. I'm worried more about like make a mistake and and cause like a, like a, a punch. But the punch in the face does not scare me anymore because that was pretty much the first stage of like do decide to do MMA. My biggest fear in the beginning like two years ago was get a punch in the face and like what is the feeling and for me that I have a really like aggressive style when I get punched I just go even harder you know it, it, MMA does not transition this way you got to be very composed and one thing I've been learned seems like um, from my war tires to study to MMA to be composed to know how to take a punch defensive in many ways so I can strike back and uh, set up my takedowns and go to my grounding pound or wild, uh, a wild, wild part, you know. And I've been working on specific training right now. The feeling is crazy, like almost like less, I think 10 to 12 days from my from my first pro debut in Thailand FC. I don't know how I feel right now. It's a mixed feeling on my stomach. <laughs> yeah, um, trust me. Um, it's just like I have no words to describe. I just excited to, you know. Yeah, I think from from talking to folks, especially in the jujitsu community, a lot of people sort of compare your debut to like when Mackenzie Dern came over into MMA and she's obviously found a lot of success in the MMA world. She's getting close to a title shot in the UFC. Is she someone that you've been paying attention to, kind of seeing how she transitioned from that world into MMA, and have you been following along with the success that she's been having? Oh, Mackenzie Dunn definitely have a, a, a honorable curriculum than mine. She, um, she won many tournaments. Uh, the only thing that I don't have the Mackenzie, Mackenzie Dunn had was ADCC because the time frame. Um, my folks do MMA and ADCC, of course, because I want to achieve this one. Not because it compares to Mackenzie Durham, but definitely Mackenzie Durham been always a um, phenomenal athlete since I was a lower belt from the transition to MMA. She been doing great, and even against high-level girls, she did not do bad. She's definitely a big, uh, a big like. Uh, picture that I look toward but you know like um, 
I am not trying to compare myself to other athletes. I'm always trying to do best, best and better. I am a hybrid strong compared to all of them, you know, because besides I compare myself then to have the same success, I also think that I can do even better. Of course, uh, different backgrounds and Mackenzie born in a match, you know, I started, I started to do way later, like 12 years old. She started like she, she was a kid. I transitioned from triathlon, from other sports before I actually got into jiu-jitsu, you know, for self-defense purpose. Um, I cannot compare myself to her, but for sure, different backgrounds. Um, and I believe we're both going to keep achieving as long as we train hard to, you know. So you're going to be fighting Stacy Vega, and she's been in the game for a little while now. She even fought Raquel Pennington, who's in the UFC on the amateur scene way back in the day in 2009. Did you know, do you know much about her? Like, I know you're going to study her a little bit, but you're more focused on yourself. But what are your thoughts on Stacy as your first MMA opponent? Now, the first thing I, I as soon as she accepted the fight, she signed the contract. I study her. Um, there's a few things. Um, the last fight that I watched from her was six years ago or something. But does it really matter for me? Um, I believe she did like the subscription on YouTube so you cannot watch people, you know? And I studied it. <laughs> uh, she did. It doesn't really matter. I just um, need to know what's what I'm gonna do. Focus on my game. For sure, be aware of her her good spots. She's very, very experienced in being in, in MMA. Um, I saw that she like uh, play uh, guard and at center too. So either one, if she wants strike or boxing or kickboxing, I'm going to be there, right pressure her. Or if she decides to go to a ground game, my ground bo- grounding pound is excellent. My pressure is excellent on top. Even in the bottom, I'm ready for each situation that could be happening. You talked about what it was like when you got punched in the face for the first time. You just got a little more aggressive. You got all fired up. What is it like for you to actually punch people in the face? Do you enjoy Like, I know it's more in a sparring scenario, but like, have you thought about what it's going to feel like to actually throw a, a super hard punch at somebody and, and, and hit them in the face at a fight? Actually, the, um, when you are a fighter, you get paid to hurt people, you know? <laughs> so like, um, it's not a great feeling to look uh, like uh, you were humble or not I'm not humble <laughs> I'm gonna step in the cage and fuck somebody up the, the feeling of like fucking somebody up is amazing you know unfortunately but <laughs> yeah that's gonna be <laughs> so I am really excited to get punched to get punched and be able to defend but also to throw my punch and know they're gonna land it will be an even amazing feeling so I can finish the fight as, as fast as I can and of course, effing somebody up is is at the top of your priority list if you could, <laughs> right? Of course, of course. <laughs> You're crazy. Like you can watch my jujitsu fights and and tell me if I don't want to finish a fight. Uh, so I'm curious. Like at this point. What, what is your overall goal in the sport of MMA? Like, is it to eventually get to one of these major organizations, to get to the UFC someday, become a world champion? Like, what's the end game for you in this sport, Talita? Yes, no, for sure. I, I Like I say, I'm 30. I have an excellent background, and I think I just need um, two years to get excellent, to get a, a, good, uh, a good striking base to um, to get actually what I need. But for sure, my main focus is UFC based on my background. I don't want to waste time bouncing around, like I said. I am very focused and committed to do what I want and what my team is planning for me. I have like a team like based of seven, eight people that are helping me going from wrestling judo Taekwondo, karate, base to basic, uh, basic um, 
boxing, working with world champion, high level guys to fix details, you know, and I definitely know that my focus will be three or four fights in my next tank is UFC for sure. There you go. Hopefully, uh, Charles Rosa can set the table for you. He fights this Saturday. Of course, he's uh, very close to Charles McCarthy as well. So, do we have yeah. an official? Do we have an official prediction for next week? How, how does this all go down at Titan FC seventy? You know, I've been. Um, I'm part of Charles' camp, and uh, Charles is just an amazing athlete. And you see it that he don't ever give up. You know. He had the, when he was amateur, he had the nickname of Rapidinho. And we know about his last fight was not as successful. He won. And we know how hard he won this fight. My prediction is all first fight, TKO, or second fight in the ground game, ground the pound finish for sure. There you go. Well, this is exciting stuff, Talita. Big fight on July 2nd. The MMA debut is going down in the Titan FC cage. And uh, we wish you all the best for the rest of this camp and in the fight itself. Thank you for the time. And uh, we'll see you in the cage next Friday night. Thank you, too. And um, thank you to give me this attention. And I'm excited to be fighting at Titan FC on July 2nd in Miami. Awesome. Thank you so much.